Okay, hopefully I'm now live. Hello. If anyone can uh, write a comment or a message to let me know that it's gone online, and then I'll actually start and introduce myself as we're a little bit early. So, got a minute or two. Okay, so people, people here, it's just seen the first comment come up. Um, I've seen a, apparently a few likes as well. So, oh, more comments. Here we go. So uh, I'll start properly in 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 one minute. So just start to loosen off. We'll bow in, and we'll have a quick loose warm up. thank Nadia and Martin for the invite and for sending me my lovely certificate before I'd even taught the, the session so that was very nice thank you um, they've got the Facebook mirror image doesn't really matter whether it's left hand or right hand as long as you're doing the reps or doing the drills or doing the things that are happening I'll probably see myself in the mirror which is now a TV screen and get things left and right wrong myself but uh, doesn't really matter so we just have a standing bow and we'll start. So feet together and ready. And just relax into your So as it said, if you've read the bump, I'm a sports scientist, biomechanist. I teach biomechanics at Loughborough University. I have a PhD in biomechanics. And I'm gonna try and talk about some stuff related, but hopefully not too much detail that people switch off and go, that was a lecture, not a training session. But what I do want to go over is some sort of looking at ways we can take basic training and advance it to more fluid, more dynamic, more flowing motion and see that that fits in with fundamental concepts in biomechanics, muscle physiology, neural control. So you don't have to know any of that stuff for it to work if you train hard. 
but it can be advantageous to know which things are helpful to advance things. So we're going to work through some, some basic techniques through to some very flowing fluid techniques. And this is important because whenever you're learning any physical skill, any motor skill, what happens is you reduce the complexity of that task you're asked to do. This is across any skill. And you call you have what's called freezing degrees of freedom. If there's a really complex combination of things to do, you have to break it down in order for your body, your brain, your nervous system, and your muscles to adapt it. So people start off rigid and they have to be rigid, but eventually that rigidity has to go. And that's what we're going to look at first of all in some blocking basics, just staying on the spot, then with some punching, and then with some kicking. So We'll warm up, the brief warm up. I find it more of a mobilisation rather than stretching, just to make sure everything's moving so it won't take long. So first of all, I like to start from the head down, dodgy back and neck from injury when I was a silly teenager. So just gently, head forward and back. Then ears to shoulders, just a few. Look left and right, just twist your head. Then half circles, back forward. Obviously, you have to do half circles going side to side, otherwise you go all the way round. From there, just shoulders forward. Round the shoulders, you're stretching the shoulder blades. You can stretch your hands, change your grip if you want. And the same thing behind, stretching behind. Okay, then stretch up. Pause at the feet, relax down. Then do hips round. Reverse. From there, just gently down, not really a stretch yet, just down to the floor. Right hand, left foot, change sides, that, and back up. Two hips around again, reverse, then just foot and ankle, just make sure. So more than stretching something off, you're just going through the range of movement, range of motion that your joints will do, just make sure everything's right, just turn hips in and out. Opposite side, it's nice and relaxed. Now, then shoulders gently forward, so both arms are out swinging, and then back forward again. Okay, now we're gonna have one back look at some uh, one bit of motor coordination problem. Okay, one of the things that comes a problem is. We focus on our hands, and we move our hands, and we put our hands in places, and we make the shapes, and we focus on what our hands are doing when we do techniques with our hands. Hopefully the same with the feet when we're doing kicking. But a large part of your brain is occupied with just physical lumps of your brain are bigger for dealing with hand, because that's what we rely on. That's what dexterous parts of the body. So let's just do right arm forward, and then left arm back. And two things here, you've got momentum from your arms swinging, and you also can focus on how your hands feel. Now let's change it, left arm forward and right arm back. And that may be a bit awkward, especially if you've not done it before, but you not too bad. Now we're gonna take our hands out of the equation. We're gonna do the same shoulder movement, right arm forward and left arm back, so forward, back. But now we don't have A, that momentum, or B, our hand movement feedback. Now reverse, left arm forward, right arm back. So two things, that should A, feel a lot more awkward to do, oh, I've got it wrong while I was talking, and B, you can find that you start to have to have body movement in order to feel like what's going on. If you just go back to right arm forward and left arm back, and change left arm forward, right arm back, that should be easier, so yeah, I'm there. So even a simple warm-up drill requires some coordination and if you take your hands out the thing out of what you're doing and you just rely on the same shoulder motion it should be a lot harder to do there's lots of ways our hands are dominant the nervous system reflexes come dominant hand they override what you might be doing with your foot so sometimes things are just physically harder to do and you have to spend longer to adapt to them so a little bit more switching off so just going to do hip side to side then just stretch out the left and cut ball of the foot. Yeah, and you can stretch up, you stretch forward, but making sure you're not leaning, you're trying to keep your hips under, feel the stretch down, front of the thigh. 
then just hands to the floor. So it's not so much a big stretch, but I'm going to go through just right shoulder to the floor. Left hand up. I take my left foot across to my right shoulder and stretch forward. And I'm going to come, try and slide my foot under into some sort of hurdle stretch. And it's more the fact that you're just transitioning through your ranges of motion rather than putting a big stretch in. Then we can just lean forward, ball of the back foot, front. Then from there we can push up, right leg forward. Input, stretch. So, not holding the stretches for a long time, just feeling we're going through and checking our ranges of motion. Left shoulder down, right foot cross. And come up and try and get round with as little excess movement as possible into hurdle or foot tucked or however. We'll stretch forward, lean forward, all the foot, push across, let's go into a kivadachi, stretch up, and then drop, push knees out, and straighten right arm to left, change sides, come back centre, up the hips round. So, that's not a get yourself flexible warm up, that's a loosen off, feel the range of a movement that you're going through, what you can get through in terms of movement patterns. Okay. So, one of the things we need to do is have a body that will physically do the karate and you need a certain amount of strength and physicality. But one of the things as you advance, you're also going to need is coordination in order to do the more complex techniques, or even a simple technique such as a punch. Just one arm's out, keeping an elbow in, making sure the twist, turning at the right time, making sure our middle's going, making sure we're pushing with the hips and the legs, shoulders down. There's lots of things that are happening. And what we, so what I like to think about is karate is like, learning to juggle. We've got to coordinate these patterns of movement in order to do all these things with exact timing in order for it to work properly. But we're not just juggling bean bags or little leather balls. We're going to learn to juggle bowling balls or big weights or chainsaws. You have to put some real effort into your physical body but with this coordination. There's no point, as I say, having a massive engine in your car. If you don't have a gearbox, transmission, clutch that can adjust it and, and allow it to transfer that energy from the engine to where it needs to go. And the ideal you want is one of those flappy paddle racing gearboxes so you can go instantly from one direction to another, one speed from another, that you can just move any part of your body how you want to with a constant motor from your horror abdomen running behind it. So, I'm going to progress through on a blocking drill to try and see that from beginner to more advanced. So left hand out, right hand on the hip. I think we're going to start as normal with Agiyuki. And when we do the Agiyuki we're going to exaggerate things. So let's start with the full arm out even if you normally don't. Just use that but stretch it and feel your hip stretch with it. Then you're going to block Agiyuki. Remember that it starts here it finishes over here, and instead of worrying where your hand goes, worrying where your elbow is, the elbow started back, and it's not going to move very far, and your body's going to turn. So the shortest distance is just to punch up, not because you're punching up, because that is the shortest distance, not just for your arm, but for your elbow. So concentrate on your elbow moving rather than your hand. But we stretch the whole body. Maybe you've over-rotated to normal, and then we blow up our pad, yuki, and we go completely hand -made. If you want to add it in, you can add a stance so you get some extra training. Then from there, we pull back with the same arm, prepare for sotuki, but again, over rotate, feel that stretch. Whether you're out or in, here or here or here, I don't mind as long as you're not out here. There's different reasons for doing each one, but I like to come in, hikite here, just roll this up, 
Okay, so just in, prepare, but you push the hip, and then you think so to key, and you come right round this side. Then the same thing, you've got to prepare for gay and bright. So you push the hip, you squeeze the arm, you can come square or you can over rotate, and then you block gay and bright. Then the same thing, you prepare for uchiyuki, right down to the hip, hips are twisted, and uchiyuki. Okay, then we're going to do the same, blocking with the other arm, but this one can just straighten. This hips pushing with the block, and then we change, and yuki. Okay, then we're going to go square, and push the blocking, preparation side, and sartuki. Then we're going to push the preparation side over, and go down right. Then we're going to push the preparation side, hand right out, and uchiyuki. Okay, so just, we'll go through that to the count, but what I want you to think about is that you stretch the arm, and you try and stretch the hip, so you're over-rotating even for basics. So let's just have a go at that. So we're stretching, left arm ready to prepare, left arm stretches, and it's agiyuki, one. Then we prepare, and it's sotuki, two. And we prepare, it's geyan brai, three. And we prepare, and uchuki. Then we just change, right hands up, agiyuki, itch, sotuki, ni, geyan brai, and we push and lock some. Uchiyuki chi. And just relax. So we may be overcooking the hip, the preparation of the hip. We'll do the hip stays more squarely in basic in a second. But there's two important things for this excessive movement. You do not need a massive preparation in order to deliver the technique. One of the biggest issues with training and doing karate fluidly and quickly is we might have to train a long time to be able to think, I'm going to lose my muscle, I'm going to pick my leg up. I'm going to punch. But in order to move, you have to use the muscle that's causing the movement, and you have to make sure the other muscles that might stop it are relaxed. And relaxing is harder than tensing. Physically, it's harder. Physiologically, muscles turn off slower than they turn on. So, with this excessive stretch, think about it. Not only are you stretching, you're pushing your whole side of your body, and this arm's pushing away. And this other hand, the hikite hand, is pulling back. So you're feeling the stretch and you think, I can use that stretch to pop my arm forward. I'm loading it. But I'm loading it by pulling the muscles back and it won't go forward until I relax the muscles at the back and increase the force in the muscles at the front. So it's got to be a combination. I'm pulling back, so I have to relax the pull back and activate the push forward for it to move. So this arm is pushing out. In order to pull this hikate back, I'm going to have to stop pushing it. So I actually have to practice relaxing this withdrawing arm first and then activating the pull. And I have to work on relaxing and activating the hikate arm. So we're stretching everything. But feel how it has to stretch through your whole body. And then we just think. Think about it. Stretching, releasing block. Taking stretching, release block. Stretching, release block. Stretching, release block. Another side. Sagiyuki. Stretching, not just held there. Stretch, release. Good. Then think the same thing. Stretch, release. Then think the same thing. Stretch, release. Then think stretch, release. And relax. So, you have to be able to turn the muscles on and off, not just on. You, that means you move fast in one direction. You can't change. You have no control. You don't have good coordination. So we have to spend a chunk of time in some of these basics when, for a beginner, this is a complicated technique, muscles on, muscles off. So we're going to practice that once more with these exaggerated techniques. But the important thing to feel is when you stretch through, you have to do it with your whole body. It's not my arm stretched, it's my body stretched and hip returned. It's my body stretched. So feel how you're stretching and moving, stretching and moving. But it's through your whole body. And it may be easier if you're in a hyperdatch with your knees slightly bent to feel the tension. So left arms. Not, not up square, stretch, 
And Agiyuki concentrating on shortest distance of your elbows and suddenly feeling from stretch to <coughs> up and then hold that push. Then the same thing again. Ready, stretch and block G. And then stretch and block San. And then stretch and block G. And prepare, push. So we stretch and block each. And we prepare and block knee. We prepare and we block San. We prepare and we block G. And so that's quite big basic movements, as big as you can get. And as you get faster and more coordinated, the preparations get smaller. But what you mustn't lose is the feeling of the effort, how much muscle action you could put into it if you were allowed the fullest distance. And you've got to learn to turn the muscles off, turn the muscles on faster and faster, so you can still put the same effort in over small distances. Okay? So we're just moving, twitch, 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 but not floppy. So we're going to move through these blocks and eventually we want a really fast fluid motion with just one arm. But it, what we're going to go to must not become spaghetti arm karate or arms like noodles. Eventually we're going to build up just so you can see something that goes <laughs> But that isn't just flailing my arm around. That's going to have all the components we're going to work on. So let's just go back, left hand out. Now keep the hips square. But the hip take back rather than letting it stretch. But feel that stretch gave you something extra to so try and keep that tension, that feeling. Feel the hips, but feel how can I get that same tension without the big movement? Bend the knees and then think <laughs> same agony. Then it's the same preparation, but now keep the hips square on the preparation, but not because you've gone loose, because you want them to pull. You want them to pull, but you lock them. You keep them there and you release them. Same thing, you keep them square, even though you want that extra preparation, you keep them square, and then move again. You keep them square, and then you block again. Then you can go to the other side. Think, here, you want to stretch, don't let the movement occur, but have the effort in by locking and tensing other muscles to hold it. Now you've got more muscles to relax around the middle before it'll move. You've got to think, itch. then the same thing. Hit the square, and go. But there's no less movement than effort. Hit the square, and go. There's no less effort. Hit the square, no less effort. And relax. And so when you're doing your sort of standard basic like that, the square hips is natural, but it shouldn't be natural in terms of effort. If you do a preparation move, be pushing the hip, locking it, and think I've got to release and move that before you do the next technique. Okay, once more. Like that left hand up, hyper dash, feet forward, bent legs, and tension. So we're concentrating on the preparation as the tension part, the movement as the relax, as the release, but release with extra effort, and then we finish, and that's just nicely stretched out and in position. So agiyuki, hips are square, and they turn shuhanme. Now on the preparation for Soto, they square, but they have effort. They don't go loose. So they go square with effort now. They go square with effort now. And right hand, Hagyuki, itch. Then we prepare, hip square with Sotuki, he. And get that, sama. Nuchuki, chi. And relax. Okay, so same arm movements. You've changed the hip. If you put less effort in, because you didn't have as much hip movement, then that's where you've got to start working on moving your core muscles, your abs, your around your ribs, pushing with your legs, hips moving, even if you're not making a big movement, just twitching that and being square, not because you've relaxed, because you've pushed the right hand side and you push the left hand side and everything's balanced, and then you release one and push the other rather than be floppy and have to build up. Okay, speed these up. So the next thing is we're going to do them all because they're all on one arm without the preparation. So right arm can stay down, left arm on hikite, 
Right arm on hickey tape, shoulders back, drop the legs, same thing. It's just Agiyuki. And I said, what you want to focus on is your Agiyuki does the shortest distance, the shortest path. And the way to do that is not to worry about the hand, it's to think, keep the elbow going on its path as quick. Your hand will, your forearm will stay attached to the rest of your upper arm. And then you can start noticing some nice things. But I don't worry about my fist. If I punch, so I'm going to punch, then watch how far my upper, from Hikite, my upper arm has travelled quite a big angle. When I block Agiyuki, my fist is now in front of my face. That would punch the incoming punch. Starts in the same place. It's protected me before the punch would have finished. So your upper block, rising block, if you imagine you just got to get your fist there to punch the incoming punch and you started together and you were clones and everything was fair, you move your upper arm less far before you protected your face. So if that's all you cared about, upper arm moving to face, how can I get it out and back? Out and back, rather than out and back. It should, be, it should be quicker to get your protection in place than it should be for the punch to finish. So you should not worry about getting punched in the face. The attacker should be worried about then getting punched in the hand, if they're good. So, you could go fast. Oh, froze. Ready? Both hands back. Right hand's blocking Agiyuki. Now remember, it's hips are square, but it's active. You push your hips and you Agiyuki itch. Then from there, pull back, prepare, Sartuki knee. Sit the square down, and both cheek. Just square out, and cheeky up. And then we change, hands are back, it's left hand moving. Hips are active, hitch. And then we pair, hip square, son. Hip square, cheek. Hip square, go. And what you've got to work, watch is that this arm doesn't become flappy. The gap might appear as your body turns, but not because you've left this. And what you should now be trying to feel is when we do it fast especially, is that you have to coordinate your movement in your torso with the blocking arm. The same as here. But now it might be different because you haven't got the momentum and the energy and the feeling of your hikite. Not that it's going to pull your energy round and through, but it allows you to coordinate and twist and pull your torso muscles. So, both hands on hip, right hand is punching first, you think, at, sorry, is blocking first, Agiyuki, but feel how your core has to move slightly differently, there's no hikite occurring, but you still need to balance the energy of the movement, the momentum of the movement, the activity on the right hand blocking side, with what you previously used your left hand for. If you just have this floppy, it'll feel weak. You've got to even have, you've got to think, <laughs> got to get that <laughs> side. Same as you pulled that in and you locked it down, you've got to have it come in. So, both hands on the hip, right hand blocking first, Agiyuki, but use your left hand side of your torso. Itch! <laughs> now think, you for pain, Shotoki, Chi! And the same thing, how do you have to use your muscles in your core? And uh, force arm! And Chi! Chi! And then think back, left hand, Agiyuki, but use your middle weight. Prepare back knee. Prepare back son. Prepare back chi. And you Now on that last Uchiyuki, I squared my hips up because I was just getting not enough torso twist without having the hikate action. Okay. So these things will change, and if you try and become aware of them, which you cannot do if your concentration is, is this in the right place, can I make the shape? It has to progress until this shape is natural, until the finished position is natural, until I get my arm without leaning, my elbows across, when I've got this final position. When you've got those shapes, then when they're automatic, you can focus in different places. So the next step in trying to become a snake rather than a rigid rod, you know, snake moves, or crack the whip, energy goes through. A snake 
moves like that, but it does it by contracting and releasing its muscles in sequence. We want to be like a snake. So, we can start preparation position, left hand out, right hand on the hip. And what we're going to do is the Agiuki, and we're really going to push the hip, but not so much forward, just forward and up, and let it go into position. Okay. And remember what I said, we're trying to follow the shortest path, the shortest movement that will get us into blocking position. This comes off face, this finishes it off. My elbow just went up the whole time. It didn't do two movements. It didn't decelerate and go again. My elbow went one movement. It's like a punch through and it turned. So my elbow is always going up at speed until it stops. It's not one and two. So that gives us a nice sharp movement. So we're going to add you each. Then you think, right, if I just pull this elbow down, I can get my Sotouki arm position. And if I pull my elbow down and I turn my body, I can almost get the block position. So if I pull my elbow down and a little bit in by squeezing my, remember, use that stuff where you feel, oh, I want to hiccate, I could use the side of my body, squeeze it down, and then the turn will cover you. So instead of you, but the feeling is the same effort as when you pull it out. And what you have to do is stretch here and feel it pull in. Well, feel the same muscles work without the stretch. So I'm pushed, and I think, it's <laughs> all too key. Now I think the same thing, one arm. Go down prior, prepare, as quick, as small movement as possible. And on this, we're gonna go hip square. They're already all the way back, <laughs> just throw them square, because that works. And then we can think, same thing, small as movement as possible, <laughs> Uchi. Okay. And we can prepare with that hand. So remember, Agiuki. Short shot, shortest distance. Sotouki. Same muscles, but shortest distance. The preparation is in the torso and the legs, not the arm. Same tensions when you prepare, but only through the middle. Chip. And then think, and don't, don't loosen up and go back, because you're already massively turned. Just at that curling. It's tiny. It's already Sotouki. Just in there, and then throw it down. So gain and by with the hip square. And then from there, we can be preparing with the shortest distance. Some people, I always call it a little push down, make sure it gets to the belt, and then turn sharp. Uchuki. Relax. So some people might not like doing the gain and bribe with the hip square. There's one thing to think about is when we're doing the standard blocks, if you think about it, you're actually in the ukis, it's basic ukis, your elbow doesn't do much. Your elbow angle does not change much. Your elbow angle doesn't change. Even on shuto, your elbow angle should change. I mean, people do that, but if you keep a classic shuto, then it shouldn't change much. But barai, because it's not called uki, it's different, sweeps from the elbow. So you can get a nice striking action with your hips in. More so, I mean, the Sotouki, you can really don't want your hips to go square because you can press. Uchiuki, you can as well. But Burai is a different technique. So just think of it, if you don't like doing blocks with hips square, think of it as not a block in this case. It's a sweeping strike. Later, it can be a downward punch. So let's go through again. Left hand out, right hand on the hip, make the preparation position and think it's your body. <laughs> then think no preparation with the arms, but the same effort with the body, but just from where it is. Knee. <laughs> and then the same thing, <laughs> hips and come square, which you chi. And then think agi yuki itch. So I'll take knee. Get in right sun, which you chi. And you're like, okay, so that combination isn't that novel. But what I want you to do is think this is the training tool. Hopefully lots of you know, just try and feel about those sorts of uh, actions. Let me just quickly check on the, uh, if you've got any comments, because uh, it's not scrolling in live time. Ooh. Okay, there's people still there. Sorry about that. So, 
as if it's going to become flowing, but it can't be something. And next thing I'm going to exaggerate is the breath. Breath like a beginner, big, because if you exaggerate the breath, you maybe have learned to use the core, and that's what we're trying to speed up. Okay, so this time it's Agiyuki. Make sure you breathe, feel the body core. So Artuki from where it is, feel the body. Make sure you feel the breath. Make sure you feel the breathing. So, at the starts now. So, right hand, and go from relax. Add you, get breath. So, to your knee. Get a sun, uchi chi. Then think, add you, get so to your knee. Get a sun, uchi chi. So, maybe take one big breath in. As I'm counting, maybe you need to take a second breath in. Two, so two breaths out, one breath in. Halfway through. But so let's go. Then one thing is we've got to add some extra tensing, relaxing. So I need to get that in quick. So ready. Agiuki with the right. Sotuki with the right. But think it's that goes up, that comes down, and the rest of the action elbow up, elbow down, and the rest of it is because of how you've used your hips your legs and your core. So just and you'll notice if you can hear two breaths. And then let's do that. And then the same thing. Go down Brian. Uchuki two breaths. Then we're going to do two techniques. Agiuki Sotuki. Shortest distance, elbow up, elbow down. Body and breath causes all the that's elbow up. That's elbow down, body and breath does the rest. So left side, you can go from anywhere. Up down. <coughs> but I want two clear breaths. Down up. <coughs> two clear breaths. Right side, up down. <coughs> down up. <coughs> up. <coughs> down. <coughs> okay. Now, try all four. One, two, three, four. And now I don't care what your hips do. I don't care whether you are showman or handmade. I don't care whether they're moving. All I care about is that they add. And the most important thing is you have tension, relaxation, tension, relaxation. So there's no reason you don't care about which, whether they're showman or handmade. You care that they did movement to add to the technique. And if you listen on this next demo, it should be four. Four breaths out. It's not my arm. It's my body coordinated. Okay. So let's do ten. Let's just try it. Try it yourself. Right side first. Itch. Relax. Left side. Knee. Right side. Itch. Relax. Left side. Knee. Right. Itch. Left knee, right, left, and relax. Yeah, me. So now, if we were in person, I could block you, and you'd see that I'm not just waving my arm around. Hopefully, the breath you can don't need the breath that will exaggerate it, but I'm trying to put put the point that it's not just waving my arm around. My arm is going through. And the only way to really get it fast is to tense as you make impact. And then relax. Tense, you make impact. Relax. Impact, relax. So that you can be tense and relax. So one way having to describe it is your body is flowing. You've got flowing motion and then like running, the water is going down and it freezes, and then it unfreezes and you move again. The thing I eventually want to feel is, imagine a big flow of water, suddenly becomes high pressure. So it never stops moving, but if that high pressure hits you, you really feel it. So you're continuously fluid, continuously moving, but you go from from to and that is like being suddenly an iron bar, but it's not iron, it's just the same movement, but intensified. So, couple more 
and whole sequence. Itch. Knee. Sun. Chi. Go. Oh. Enjoy. Now this is going to be a bit awkward because I want you to hear my hand. And I'm not and so this is the hardest part to do. And maybe to show or demonstrate. What I actually want is open hand, squeeze, relax, uh, squeeze, relax, squeeze, relax, squeeze, relax. So maybe try and stop my gee rustling. But if you can hear, it wants something that's, I have to slow it down, but it has something that's like. So I am opening my hand and trying to make a clapping sound. But it's not audible over the gig. But that's what I'm going to try and get. So if you are recording it in its slow motion, for these ones there should be a time where my fist goes strong, then it relaxes. It may pass you open. Eventually it just has to sweet release. That's all that's needed. Squeeze release. Squeeze release. Boom. Boom. And it's on to the next one. Boom. So let's try that sequence there. Obviously, I'm going to be relaxing my hand in between. So right hand, itch. Left knee. Sun. Chi. Then don't forget the body. Sun. Now, that's something to work on. And you're not necessarily going to be able to do it. It takes time to physically be able to speed up this relax and tend to relax, tend to relax, tend to relax. And then it's hard to do it in a continuous movement. Like I said, we are juggling bowling balls. We're not, oh, I can juggle. It's like, Jesus, I've got to juggle this silly thing. Then you've got to think, I've got to move like a snake, not a... This. And then, of course, we can just add on. I'm going to sit here. And after the Uchiuki, then that's when it's made to Kazami. And then I might move my body, because it's moving my body. Think. You're moving. Coming back. One, two, three, four, five, and you can think that Uchiuki, if you let it tense and relax, will have a little pump. And it will go again. You'll tense and relax and it go again. You'll tense and you'll relax. Go. Tense and relax, go. So you just think. On. Then you can think, change hands as you're moving away. Because the movement away isn't from a rigid frame that that was solid, and then this millisecond later it's not. See, so just move again. Okay, let's check comments. Okay. So remember, taking it from stretch, simple, but feeling all the body and musculature and what you have to use, and throwing away the big outside arm movements, but keeping all the torso movement. So now I'm going to quickly show you this with punching. Okay. Shake off your legs. Been in the start. So, just going to do Chopazuki. But as I said before, don't worry about your hand. Think. Squeeze. How do I? And if you think you're punching with your middle, keep your elbow touching your middle. Your middle's going to contract and be part of this throwing and then not contract to tense up, contract to throw and transfer what's happening. It's got to move. You keep it nice and straight. 
then you don't have to think, I'll throw my body arm out. You just have to think, everything in. Everything in. Okay, so left hand out, right hand on the hip. As soon as you punch, squeeze and relax. But you push the right hip, hopefully, when you punch. And you squeeze your tailbone and tuck your abs and your whole body's gone solid. Well, like before, let it relax. Not just your arm, whole thing. And accentuate that by pulling it back. So left arm is out, right hand is on your hip. You're going to punch once and put it back. Then you put your left hand out again and we'll practice it. You punch with the right and you put it back. You punch with the right and with your body and you put it back. Don't need this hand to go out, it might do it automatically. You just got to think. Relax, feel everything. Body's into this and back. One and back. So, let's do a few of those on the right together. Each. Pair with the left knee. Pair with the left side. Pair cheek. Pair. That doesn't matter the order because this is eventually just one thing. And right hand out. So, same thing. Strong punch, but it's got to finish. And it finishes because your whole body moved. If I was a bit more dynamic, drop my side, push away. Something went into it and back. So then you can move. So, left hand, itch. Right hand out. Knee. Back. Sun. Back. Cheek. Back. Go. And again. Oh, I didn't come back. You can say on the last one. No, because that's enough. Now I freed it up and released it. Now, two punches with the same arm. Exactly the same feeling. That, Hikate, that's all the way out of the body. Your whole body in your arm pulls back. Your whole body in your arm goes forward again. So, left hand out, right hand on the hip. Thinking. Punch. Now, we can just leave that one out. Right hand open, try on the left. Knee. <coughs> open the left. Sun. <coughs> open the right. Think trees. Think don't let it. Everything. Just start your fist, drive your hip. <coughs> Move. <coughs> Itch. <coughs> open the right. Knee. <coughs> Sun. <coughs> Cheek. Okay, so what we got to do is do two punches. And the important thing we said is not the arm, the body. I do the big punch from back here because that's where my hand is. By the time my arms move to about here, I should have relaxed my hip and it should be ready to go again. So I should be able to punch with the same amount of body movement from there. So we'll just try, we'll try and change angles. So we punch and relax one punch, but it's the hips. So we punch and go again. Right hand out, so we punch and your hips went back like before, but this hand didn't have time. And then you punch again. So we're thinking. Thinking. And if you want to punch first one straight and next one a bit of an angle to get more hip, Fine, to think. Punch. Two techniques. Right hand out. Punch. Two techniques. Punch. You've got hips on both. Left hand out. On both. Left hand punching. Eventually, like before, I don't care how you're moving as long as your hips gone bang, bang. And your abs have gone. And your, okay, and your elbows have gone. And everything's gone. Everything's gone in, in. Gone in. Let's talk that one short. Sure. Take away. So, last few. Double punch. But your arm only comes back as far as you need it. There's no rule. It can be almost straight. If you time it, you can have your hip and your shoulder, and you can get almost two punches. Okay. But think, what we practiced all the way through on the blocks, 
One, two. Do the angle to feel the second one. Ready. So I'm going to watch you, but I can't. Used to zoom. Left hand out. It. Right hand out. Knee. Left hand out. Sun. Now you can let your feet move. Right hand out. Chi. Back. Left hand out. Sun. Chi. Sorry, right hand out. Chi. And so the shifting and the foot lander will be after the punch, hopefully. If you've got this super fast. One, two, three. But really it's in this exaggerated beginner form. But it's just become look stupid like that because there's no balancing movement. Last few. Double punch. Do this. First punch, first count. All the way back and punch twice. So out and back all the way out. We're thinking. We're thinking. Okay. Then second count on the on the first arm. Doesn't come back. Punch to there, but to there, go to there. Okay, so first count, itch, left hand out, double punch. Itch. Open, itch. Now knee. Knee. And you might find, oh, did I start to cheat and not punch fully on the first one? Yes, you will. So do I. But you have to complete the first technique. So right hand is out. It's a full punch, full body. Then it comes, then it goes again. And if you can't do it, go back to just double punches on the full. Maybe do those in stance. Yeah, Kazuki. Think, oh, okay. It's my hips that can't keep up. So, you, and you can't necessarily just do it. You have to drill it. And you probably have to drill the fundamentals of it, i.e. the component parts. And what you really have to do is shrink them down over time. Even something as simple as men, men doing studies on people working in factories with manual labour, rolling cigars, people keep improving even after decades. And they get finer and faster and better motor control. And that can keep happening. You can get weaker, but maybe your coordination can slowly get better. Up to a limit. Eventually age will catch up with all of us. So... It's working on what were the big things, how do you shrink them down? And the things you invariably want to shrink first are these external bits. They have to get there, but they don't need necessarily the huge parts. Whereas this, 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 this glue, this drive into the floor, all of that has to move. All of that has to stay and the arm can just be a smaller part of it. And one way to, uh, we're going to finish with a couple of kicks just so they're not missed out. One way to look at this is, I'm not joking, you have to have some physicality in terms of strength. Not be a big strong muscle man, although people will accuse me of being big and strong and muscling it because I'm not skinny and I'm not fat. Okay, maybe I'm fat. But you have to have the physicality to do the movements. If you cannot make a front leg lift in back stance without leaning back, then either your stance is terribly wrong, not a little bit wrong, terribly wrong, or you haven't probably got the strength just to move on its own. And just to show that, we're going to do the same quick drill with the leg as with the hands. You're going to stand, and we're just going to do the knee lift drill, but your foot is off the floor, and you feel like you've pushed it down, so you extend it like a sidekick. You don't have to turn the foot, 
and that's down. So that's the finished position. And then we're going to focus on the knee lift to the chest. But when you do it, really focus. You can't push off the floor now. You've got to just use the contraction of the hips and think. But when you can, you've got to push it back down. So it's thinking, contract, push. This is now pushing. I want to lift. I'm going to relax and contract. Knee. So left side. You can put your foot out to the side, to the back, to the front, I don't care where, but just have it pushed down. Then you do the, you can put your arms out, you do the knee lift, up and down. But it's not pushing off the floor, it's not relaxed, because you've got to relax and move. Knee. So you can see, sun. Cheek. Go. Rock. Sit. Hutch. Cool. Oh, we'll do one, two. Jump. Okay, right side. So it's important that you drive it down. Remember, said, like the stretch. We've got to learn to relax the pushing muscles before we engage the opposite pull or vice versa. Otherwise, you're spending time on the brake and the accelerator. Okay, so right legs down. So you feel like you're pushing your foot away from you. And then you put them down. So, cheek, go, rock, switch, hutch, cook, jaw. Now that should be much harder, certainly than feet on the floor and bouncing them off. And probably should be harder than just letting your foot dangle there and moving. Because you've got to think, push away, relax and move. You always want this agonist antagonistic grouping to relax out. So, just to finish, I'm going to do, let's just go left leg forward, long kamai, but not a short kamai. And we can do it from front stance if we want. Now, the same feeling middle, core, hip squeeze. Off the floor, when you do front, my ashi, front leg my Gary, try not to rock back. Try to think the same thing as we had. You've got yourself in a pushing. So you just go forward. Just thinking, slide my head up with the back of the room. In. And then I've got to think, back and down. Change sides. Just thinking. How do I just use what I need? How do I just get, but now I'm getting shorter, you want to keep the thing, that leg pushes in and up. This leg has to lift, not like, up and back, but in and up. And we're getting the long starts. You should be going in on the kick. Should be going in on the kick. Should be going in on the kick. Same as if you're going forward on the punch. Shortest distance. When you do the Mayashi, it might be fun starts, then it's really, you've got to think, oh, lift that. Oh, there you go, little lean back. And then the little lean back. So, focus on trying to drive in on the Mayashi Maigeri. And then when you land, put your foot in. So it's stooped left leg. I can see the screen easier. Check I'm doing it. Think, push, in the middle, boom. That feeling, boom, in. Now think, normal my Gary, and hold your leg up. Remember what I said, transfer, feel in the middle, throw your leg back, and let it suck you round. And if you've got the right floor, you can just turn on your heel. So the front leg one, drives in. The back leg one, try and keep your body controlled. Go to the couch, then think, throw it back. How it move you? It moves you because you use your core to lift and push. Then you use your core to throw and drag you round. It'll only drag you round if you're active. So, my actually my Gary, and it my Gary whole thing Woo! pulls you round. My actually my Gary, and it. Okay, <laughs> pull you round. Okay. So, 
on those two kicks, the front leg front kick will turn to shite if you cannot physically lift your leg quick enough to kick. You have to pivot round. If you lift this front leg off the floor, you'll pivot around your back leg. Unless you do that, that's great, but it's a different drill. So if you can't do it in front stance, go down. If you can't do it short on your stance, so keep your weight balanced, centered, but with a shorter stance, so that you have still got only forward. This, back and in, is a different thing than just in. Then you have to turn. You're thinking, pull it back. Everything should want to fall forward. So if you can't do it in the biggest stance, don't lean back, shorten it, so you can still lift, you can lift and go in top. I lean back. In and in and back. And you're it. But it might be kicking, but it's the same. Hips one way, release and push the other ones. Release and push the other side. And torso and abs and connected. Same as on the punch. It's this middle that moves. The same on these kicks. The legs just have to be up to speed. Not leaning back. Twitch. Now this one. It's my hip. Pulls me round. My hip. Pulls back up to the bottom so you can go again. My hip. But my hip isn't existing on its own. My hip exists. Connected to my torso connected to my legs so you can't use your hips as the air total explanation they are part of a sequence i want to feel like i'm moving like a snake in terms of flowing through my whole body feel my whole body movement stances body weight forward body weight center body weight back then to slush through a dirty key. It's just. But then I also want to feel whenever I want, my muscles can go boom, 100% as quickly as possible. But there's no point in my back leg going 100% as quickly as possible on this, because I won't get my front leg up. So you still need the timing. <laughs> if I just drive as quick as I can, <laughs> won't have a chance. So there's still this coordination, but it goes and it's coordinated through the timing of front and back. So, and the same thing. Nicky Ash. Well, you could start using Nicky Ash from here <sighs> to fl flow you through. So, snake in terms of you can always flow energy along the whole system, but then the ability to go 100%, which, like I said, with the water, if your water flows, and then it just suddenly goes high pressure and then goes back again. Before that, you get the feeling of you've got the water, then it freezes and everything locks up and then it releases again. And before that, you've just got, oh, it's sort of half frozen and it's sort of, you need to build on and learn it. There's no way around it at the end of it. No matter how much you know scientifically or technically or read about, if you don't drill it, it won't happen or not as well or not as quickly so that's an hour this time is up so thank you very much um speak together and all right once again thank you for everyone who joined in lots of nice comments see people joining in if you have any questions for me you can ask specifically in the comments there or find my facebook page ask directly etc and this, once again, thanks to all the people who have been teaching on this, keeping us done while we are still all locked up. Again, thanks to Nadia and Martin for organising this. I, uh, I am not in a lockdown area, but the dojo I normally train is, is still in the lockdown area. So I am still on this floor when I push the sofas back or outside on the slippery patio when it's not. So this is great. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.